it? Well, it's now the Gallery of Modern Art, but its history is extraordinarily rich. Effectively, this was a building on its own, and it was a grand Glasgow tobacco layers merchant's house. So it was the house of a very rich man. It would have sat among fields when Glasgow was not developed and before the streetscape was, was really here. And the Cunningham Mansion then develops into Glasgow's Stock Exchange, the Royal Exchange, Glasgow's first telephone exchange, and the gallery itself. Now tell me about this Mr Cunningham. How did he get all his wealth? Well, he was one of the Glasgow traders of the 18th century. Now, they are generically known as the tobacco lords. They were the Bill Gates of their era, but they didn't really go in for ostentation. These were, after all, Presbyterian business people. They banked their money and they built houses that were grand, but really weren't the ultimate expression of great wealth. They might not have been flash with their cash, but they certainly made sure generations of Glaswegians would remember their names. It's from pioneers of trade such as Ingram, Buchanan, and Glassford that Glasgow has some of her most well-known street names. There are lots of examples of George and Glasgow left, if you know where to look for them. There's the Tobacco Laird's house in Miller Street, there's St Andrews in the Square, that wonderful temple church, just a glorious expression of merchant wealth. Like the motto, let Glasgow flourish, the tobacco merchants did just that, creating the foundations for the next generation. that they'd built actually fueled much of the Victorian development of the cities. The greatest is obviously Glasgow City Chambers, full of statuary, incredibly intricate, beautifully detailed, the utmost expression of Victorian grandeur. Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum is developed out of Glasgow's first great exhibition in 1888. And Kelvin Grove is a wonderful, over-the-top, French Renaissance, exuberant, slightly mad building. Also in Glasgow's West End, the Park Circus development. It provided fine terraced residences for the moneyed middle classes. The university moved here in the 1870s. This Gothic revivalist creation by Sir George Gilbert Scott was the largest commission in Britain since the Houses of Parliament. But arguably the city's most popular Victorian building is the People's Palace in the East End. It does what it says in the tin, it's there for the people of the East End, and it's a social history museum with its wonderful winter gardens. You know, it still has great scale, great presence, and what a venue for a party. We're just so rich, we are, you know, a dream as far as the visitor is concerned in terms of the history of our city, but that legacy still sees us rather well into the future.